Thank you again for joining me on another awesome, awesome episode of My Best Life. I'm Susanna Sprague, and this week I have an incredible guest that I know you're going to love hearing what she has to say. You're going to love her story. Like, it's one of those rags to riches, like, just badass stories. She is a, I'll let her tell you. But uh, <laughs> this week we're going to be talking to Christina Thomas, and she's joining us from Southern California. And uh, hi. Christina, hi. So just a little intro into who Christina is. Uh, Christina has redefined real estate as a, as a profession for women. A strong and independent woman, she is an inspiration to many young girls. Christina Thomas is no foreigner to struggle. Born to a single mom, Christina realized the worth and importance of money at a very early age in her life. She was abandoned in her early years and had to live on the streets for a short period of her life, experiencing the sourest lemon life had to offer. However, Christina turned out to be one of those inspirational women who would not settle for less. So welcome to the show, Christina. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this has been uh, like four months in the making. I don't know. We, we chatted yeah many months ago about yeah. uh you coming and doing this so i appreciate you taking the time out of your really busy schedule to talk to me for an hour i love it let's do it yeah yeah awesome so just to let everyone know so christina and i have never met in person uh but she is a very long like childhood friend of my husband's and so when I started this podcast, I was like, who could I, you know, interview? I want to talk to interesting people. I want to talk to inspirational people. I want to talk to powerhouse women doing badass things. And my husband was like, I know exactly the right, perfect woman for you to talk to. And so he put me in touch with you and he had nothing but amazing things to say about you and like that you'd be perfect for what I'm looking for, you know, to interview and to talk to. And, and then you and I got on the phone and we, hit, I, I feel like we hit it off pretty well. I was in Staples. I was like walking around for an hour. I think we were on the phone, like almost 45 minutes. And uh, that was nice to connect with you, you know, total stranger. So he, had, he knew what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. And he's a good guy. He is a good guy. He is a good guy. He had nothing but uh, amazing things to say about you. So thank you. Thank you again. So let's, let's. Um, so nice. I would love to give a whole understanding of who Christina is because I, and, and I'd really love to, you know, get into like where you're at now, but can we talk a little bit about like the rough start? Because I do this. So this show is, you know, what I do, I talk to people I find fascinating and this is a crazy world we live in. And I, I'm not the only one who's found balance and joy and all of that, like in spite of crazy crap we deal with, you know, and just in California and in America and planet earth, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and I love understanding how people got to where they are, because I think that the, the value and the nuggets of wisdom come from people who've lived, you know, crazy lives. And so just a little bit of your intro here, I'm like, oh, she's lived a crazy life. So could you explain to us like what your childhood was like, what that upbringing was like? Cause it sounded like it was a little, you know, um, I don't know, I, challenging, uh, maybe it really inspired you. I don't know. What about your childhood that like really stands out for you? Sure. So uh, my mom had me at 19. Mm -hmm. uh, she was a single mother. I never, I never met my dad. Uh, my dad, uh, they ran away, had me in Richmond, Virginia. And then I guess he was very abusive during her pregnancy with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so she moved back when I was six weeks old to her parents in Reseda, and uh, she had very well-off parents, but they weren't kind of the type that would hand out the silver spoon. And so they got her house in Woodland Hills, but they told her that she had to work. And so raising me, my mom always had a couple jobs. Um, <clears throat> everything was, I think, different for me than most kids. I, I started walking to school at a very young age because my mom had you know, multiple jobs. My mom actually used to work at the uh, Pickwick Pub <laughs> on Ventura Boulevard that everybody knows. And if she didn't have a sitter, I would be hidden underneath the bar. Just really random things that like a seven-year-old and eight-year-old really shouldn't probably be experiencing. Um, but I know that she did the best she could at that time. Uh, it was a lot of loneliness. I would wake up in the middle of the night to some random babysitter, you know, because she wanted to go out. But I get it now that I am a mom. I mean, she was in her early 20s and she was trying to, 
live her life. And she has this like kid in tow. And I remember a lot of rough patches as far as, you know, Gemco at the time, which is Target now. I would always want like a My Little Pony that were probably like $2.99 back then. And I could never get one because we just didn't have the type of money. Uh, we would go, she'd get welfare checks and to get food. And so it was, you know, one of those things kind of growing up, not really having anything. <clears throat> and then she met a guy when I was 10 and was smitten by him. And he was this like hot contractor working on her friend's house down the street. I specifically remember she put on a yellow bikini to walk down to, cause he had a yellow hot truck. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was like one of those, like with his like, you know, two cruise lights or something. And uh, they hit it off, ended up like a fast forward marriage. <clears throat> and that's kind of like when things got really, really rough for me. Cause she basically had this new life. She had a new husband. He wanted to start a family. Uh, so my first brother was born when I was 12 and my other brother was born when I was 15, kind of like at that root age where girls really need some kind of stability with, you know, your body's changing, your hormones are changing. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff going on uh, from a girl that's 12 to, you know, 16, 17. Uh, so around the age of about 15, uh, it was getting really bad with me and my mom. She was just very... Um, I don't know, physically, not physically, but like emotionally and really good with her words. So I, I moved out of the house at 15 and it was one of those, like, I'm going to leave and go down the street and hope that your mom come and pick you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She didn't come pick me up. <laughs> uh, she didn't come pick me up for like a really long time. And so I, of course was like, well, I'm not going to go back and ask. And so I ended up living on the street. I uh, found an abandoned house that a friend of mine told me about. So, you know, I'd go in the back door and I had all my childhood trinkets because she, uh, when I moved out, she had somehow like let me know through friends that all my stuff was by the garbage can, that if I wanted any of it to come pick it up before trash day. So I had like all these like boxes of all my childhood trinkets that I had been saving. And um, <clears throat> that was a really big pivotal time because here I'm living in this person's abandoned house. All of their stuff is in the garage. I, I believe they were going through a divorce there was no electricity and there was no hot water. And I would take these cold showers that had mold in the shower. I'd wear shoes. Um, I think I had like a blanket and a pillow on like an old mattress. It was, it was pretty crazy uh, until they found out that I was living there. And you know, one of those like dart for your life down the street so they don't catch you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And so that kind of just made that short, that decision and, and kind of how my mom reacted uh, propelled me into kind of a life of uh, street life. You know, you kind of get really smart, you pick all the wrong crowd, you yeah. get into partying, uh, just a lot of horrible choices. And uh, it took a long time to pull myself out of, out of those childhood choices. And, and there's a lot of trauma around that. You know, you still get stuck. I mean, like, I know your story is phenomenal. You get stuck in these <clears throat> time warp of like, you know, I'm 46 now and I'm like, when I was 16 and like, you're just kind of stuck in this old pattern of, cause it was so traumatic. It was like embedded into your central nervous system. And so, uh, I think I take a lot from that now going forward, a lot of that strength and resilient, and I've been through a lot, seen a lot. So my, my choices now are very well thought out. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm, uh, proud to be alive and not living on the street. Yeah. <laughs> I like, well, I feel like I made it. <laughs> I, oh, you absolutely made it. Um, and I feel like your bullshit meter is probably on point. You know, when you live a life like that, where every, everybody has to be, everybody <laughs> has to like meet, you know, a criteria, you just go through, you go through people and you can just, you know, especially with this, just that street smart, you really can spot the I don't know, the people wasting your time, you know? So, and, and I, I would imagine as a yeah. business owner, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's probably a good, that's one of those like assets that you have. Good, good intuition for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And so, okay. And so you're now you're, now you're older and you're picking the wrong people and making some questionable decisions and choices for your life uh where along the way what was your first like turn around a corner like that that showed you that there was another way possible what was the first time you saw that uh 
Uh, you know, I think during all of the challenging times, I kind of knew that I wasn't going to always be there. I mm-hmm. think I had this like inner critic. I was always like, you're better than this. This is temporary. Yeah. Uh, but I think for me, my husband I met is really the time that my life turned around. You know, he played football. He had never done a drug in his life. And it was literally a fresh breath of air for me because I'm coming off of Hollywood and I bartended and I'm like serving Michael Jordan. I'm around all these like, you know, Kid Rock and Pamela Anderson. And like, you're, you know, you're kind of like in the mix of Hollywood. And uh, to have somebody that wasn't really caught up in that really made me go back to like my roots. I was like, yes, I am just a simple girl. I don't need all this. And so I was 24 when I met him. And I do think meeting him is what really saved my life because uh, prior to that, I was just another, you know, trying to keep it, it going along with everything in LA. And, you know, LA is one of those melting pots that you're either in one lane or in, in the other lane. <laughs> and so uh, um, I really feel like that was a big chance to like pull out of LA and uh, the LA lifestyle yeah. and everything that came with it. And don't get me wrong, I love LA. I live in San Diego now. And I like always talk about LA. I got my LA hat. I mean, I'm a diehard LA. And so it has nothing to do. I love the city. It was just as a young girl, uh, you can get really caught up in that if you don't have any family to say, hey, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? And so I didn't really have anybody in the corner. Yeah. You know, helping me with those type of choices. It was kind of one of the learn as you go. Yeah, learn as you go. Yeah, absolutely. This isn't, it's not the most gentle uh, cities, you know, for somebody trying to figure it out. You know, I always feel bad for the people who come here from, you know, like little small towns in the middle of, you know, the country and they come here with big, you know, dreams. And most people get chewed up and spit out here just because it's so cutthroat and it's just so fast and people, you know, making meaningful connections. It's hard. It's hard to make meaningful connections here just because everybody is really concerned with themselves and like, what can I get out of this town and what can I get out of you? And, you know, um, yeah, if you, if you've got a good support system, you can navigate it, you know, but if you don't, you can get swallowed up by it. For sure. Yeah. A hundred, a hundred percent. I'm sure you could always identify the ones that are not from LA. Yeah. 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 You're like, Oh, you poor thing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You're like, Oh, you're new here. (laughs) Of course. Um, okay. So you met your husband and you guys now live in San Diego. And, uh, and so did you always want to sell real estate? what did you always want to do with your life? Sure. So I actually, uh, for me, I love working with kids. Mm. I, um, right before I met my husband, I had a a bender in Vegas when I was, I bartended at a place called Tsunami on Beverly Drive. And we did this like Vegas trip, all of us that worked there, the managers, the bartenders, and we went up on a bus, bad idea, came back. I ended up breaking my hand on this trip and I couldn't bartend. And so I, uh, had a dye my hair brown. I moved back home. It was very, lost my car. It was like horrible, right? All these things you have. And, um, I went back to my roots of working at the YMCA. I worked in the, uh, life center, which was with people, uh, that had Parkinson's or getting over some kind of traumatic brain injury, like learning how to walk again. And prior to that, when I was growing up, one of my jobs, one of my many jobs I had was I was a lifeguard there. And so I used to teach kids how to swim and I, I loved that. And so when I lost the bartending job and all that stuff, I was like, I need to just go back to just a regular job. What I really love to do is being around people, help people. And uh, I think that's why I met my husband is because I like the timing of it was just a couple months in, I was starting to like transition, like I was over it. And then he was like the first sign, like, okay, you're on the right path. And then I've realized that like, I always loved the kids and I really became very apparent now that I, even if I do real estate, I am very involved with my kids sports, but I love being the team mom. I love being the business manager. I'm like on the field at football games. I'm obsessed with just like the kids giving me a pound or give me a hug or like, like, Hey CT. And I'm just like, I just, they're just so raw and authentic and there's no judgment. And so for me, I think that, 
if I had like education earlier on in my earlier years, I probably would have gotten to something with working with kids. Um, but I didn't really think about real estate until we moved down here. When my husband got a job relocation, we sold our house in the Valley and we moved down here. And I was like, at the time I worked at the Lexus dealership in Woodland Hills. And uh, I was like, I am not working weekends. Well, meanwhile, I work every weekend in real estate, but like, you know, car sales is like eight to 10 hours to get that one lead. Yeah. And so I had to kind of figure it out. And a friend introduced me to my first boss and it just came naturally. You know, I think coming off of car sales for three years, I was one of their top salesperson at Lexus. Uh, I just naturally love talking to people and then, you know, learning a product. And so, yeah, we've been here since 04 and that's, I got my license in 04. And so what part of helping people, like what is helping do people do? What does that do for you? My experiences of like helping kids, like give back to them um, more and more as I get older, I, I think I would love to get into public speaking to young girls mm -hmm. that are teenagers that are homeless and let them know, like, if you just keep pushing through and have good expectations for yourself, it's just all temporary and kind of being that example um, that I made it in my life story, you know, it's hard to go into detail here, but to be able to share that with a group of girls that are kind of going through that, I think for me, that is full circle. Mm -hmm. You know, I love, I have a, a couple of the guys that are friends with my son have a lot of, you know, issues at home and I'm close to their moms and they call me and they're like, CT, I need you to call so-and-so like, I can't take it anymore. And I'm like, all right, I'll go pick them up, you know, grab pizza and be like, what's up, man? Like, let's talk this through. And then I tell my story and what it was like for me at 15 and how, how it went down. And do you want that? And they're like, no, I don't want that. I'm like, right. So you gotta, you know, and so yeah, yeah. I kind of feel like I'm this mama hen. Uh, but I, that's really where I, like my heart is. I mean, I love real estate. I love meeting people. I love beautiful houses. It's a fantastic job, you know, being a mom and having flexibility. Um, but if there was a, a hobby or some type of like true meaning, it would be, you know, getting involved with the teenagers that are having it really rough and letting them know that someone's in their corner. Yeah. I would imagine that the, you're in a unique position, right? So you've had a unique experience where you're, you're, you were a young, you were a teenage girl who was homeless and had went through all the twists and turns and all those things. But then on the other end of it, you know, you believed in yourself enough to say yes to somebody good coming into your life and then building from there and allowing somebody to love you. Like the allowing somebody to love you part when you just spent however many years proving to yourself that you're unlovable, you know, or, or life is proving to you, you know, yeah, and at least sending you evidence. Right. So to mm -hmm. break free from that and somebody shows up and you let them love you like that alone <laughs> for teenage girls or, or, not even teenage girls, like 30 year old women, you know, to learn that kind of thing. But just, I think that your unique experience, it puts you in a, in a really special position for Pete, for kids, especially to listen to what you have to say. Cause again, like you said, kids are, especially kids nowadays, like you've got teenagers, like they're mm -hmm. way more savvy, way more savvy than oh, yeah. I was a kid. So glad we didn't have social media back there. <laughs> oh, seriously, you know, but they are like, they're quick, you know, you really kind of can't they fool are. them. So they, they don't want to hear bullshit. You know, they want, if they, if you're yeah. going to give them any kind of advice, you better know what you're talking about. So you're in this great position to really get them to trust you because you've been through yeah. some really dark stuff. So, uh, have you done, have you done any public speaking? Is that something that you'd like, you said that's something you want to do, but have you done that at all? Like in high schools or I would, I haven't, yeah. mm. I don't even know how to start that. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure I yeah. could figure out how to start it. That's I, uh, I always felt like it should just happen organically. You know, mm -hmm. if it's someone asked me to speak at a school, yeah. I would definitely do it, but it's, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to like pave something that's not there I just want it to happen uh I think a little bit is like that with some of my friends kids and um I do I have a unique I have a unique 
I have a unique gift with kids, even with my own kids, Mm -hmm. the way I relate to them and I'm able to talk to them with an experience versus you can't do this or you can't do that. I come with an experience of why it's probably a good idea to like stop and think about it. Right. It's probably a good idea to stop and think about, do you want to go to that party? Is that where you want to be seen? Does that go with your goal that you have? What's your goal? Okay. That's your goal. Do you think that's your, do you think that gets you to your goal? No. Okay. So like what, why? Cause you're bored, you know? So kind of breaking down all the things that no one ever said to me where I was like, Oh, I could have taken this other road, <laughs> but there was no one to call like, Hey, is this a really good idea? Should I go to this party at three in the morning? <laughs> you know? The uh, no, the answer is yeah. a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Nothing ever good comes out of that for sure. Oh, and yeah. so it's a, it's a different world though. You know, the kids now with social media and uh, I think the kids have way more pressure than growing up back in the day, our pressures were different. Their pressures are about being available. The, the, there's a lot of behind the scene. I don't know, what do you call the people who are like uh, key warrior, keyboard warriors? They like just talk a bunch of smack. There's a lot of passive aggressive. I, I tell my kids all the time, that would not be tolerated in LA. <laughs> like you get a knock on the door. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, pop, you're popping off talking like that on social media. There's a knock at the door in LA. And they're like, what? <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. San Diego is yeah. so sweet. You're like, oh, you think you guys are so cute down there. Uh, yeah. It's, it's such a uh, <laughs> uh, gentle area to live, you know? Oh. Um, so it's, you're, sl- you're it's, good, it's a right? slow, it's a slow pace. Uh, which is great. What's that? I said, I said, well, that's great to grow up in. Um, yeah. But I was saying you've got two kids, right? You have a boy and a girl. I do. I have a 12 year old daughter and a almost 16 year old son. Yeah. Both, yeah. both athletes. Which so is that's so good. great. Which is so great. What sports <laughs> yeah. does your daughter play? She's a soccer player and she does flag football. Nice. That's awesome. And you get, and you and your husband yeah. obviously are super involved in, in that part, right? The, you know, just supporting them and. Yeah. My husband's been the head coach. Uh, he was the head coach for nine seasons uh, for Pop Warner. Mm-hmm. I was the president, VP, fundraiser, <laughs> treasurer, yeah. everybody, every volunteer position. And then uh, my son has now just had his first year at freshman high school. And, uh, I, that was the first time I sat in the stand since he was five years old Wow! because at high school, they already have, you know, they already have a system. Yeah. And then, uh, my daughter's, my daughter's team, my husband coaches the FNL, which is a Friday night lights flag football, all girl team. We have an all girl team every season. And so my son and my husband coach the girls. It's pretty cute. Right. That's very great. I just That's get, I just get the matching socks to make them look cute. Exactly. <laughs> fine what uh what now with flag football is there is there same kind of positions in flag football as in regular football oh yeah it's mostly all the speed positions so either like the quarterback running back wide receivers there's no they can't touch each they can't touch or anything and so my daughter's extremely fast you know we're getting her into track and field she's very very fast she has a she has a gift we try to tell her she's we got her in this tracking club uh, that started in December. Mm-hmm. Uh, practice number two, she comes home and she goes, I, there's like 60 kids. She comes home and she says, I beat everyone but two high schoolers. I'm all, what? And she's a sixth grader. Wow. <laughs> she's like, oh yeah. I was like, yeah, you you could be probably working on being an Olympian. She's, she just okay. runs so naturally. She looks like a gazelle. All of the soccer moms are like, we love watching your daughter run. She, it's beautiful. I'm like, I know, yeah. I hate running. It's amazing to watch. I know, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. That's so good. Yeah. So. Yeah, they're great kids. I now, okay, so you didn't have a, a mom and a dad. You didn't have that dynamic, right? You know, until, I mean, yes, mm-hmm. you had a stepdad later, which, you know, it sounds like wasn't your favorite, mm-hmm. you know, dynamic. Yeah. So without that like you didn't grow up with mom and dad right you didn't have the mo- the male and the female thing so where who do you model that after like being a being the mom that you are that's so hands on and you're with your partner like who do you model your motherhood after since your mother wasn't a great model um i think i just went with everything opposite on how i was being treated yeah yeah that works too. You know, so I, you know, 
I had a couple of friends that had great parents and I always said, can they adopt me yeah. <laughs> all the time? And I'm like, can you, God, you have like the coolest parents. Will they adopt, they, they want to adopt me. Right. And so I think I kind of picked and choose different personalities. You know, uh, I definitely still, I mean, my husband's fantastic. We've been together 22 years. I, for a long time before I met him, I had a lot of issues about abandonment with guys. Every guy before me, before him cheated on me. And I thought that was okay. And, um, you know, you girls that don't have dads have a hard time filtering, like what's the right guy. And, um, I think that we just got really lucky. We have, we have a, we're a great team and we've been a great team. You know, since my husband met me, he saw me for who I was, where a lot of people didn't. Mm -hmm. And he always said, just be yourself. Mm -hmm. And we, we've had that since the first night we met. Mm -hmm. And so I got, I just got super lucky that he was put into my life. Um, at the time he was put in my life because there's, there's not a lot of guys that act like him that are married, right? Like a, there's a, a handful of men who, when they're married for a long period of time, you know, they like to go do their thing, but they're not really into their wives after a while. And yeah. so we're, we're still a solid team. We'll have our 20 year wedding, wedding anniversary in June. And I think we just kind of, he also taught me, he, you know, his mom's very strong and he comes from a solid family and so he's kind of been kind of that core of like kind of having what I wish I had. And so we kind of, we, we work well together. I have all the street stuff and he has like the family unit and like just kind of working together. We didn't have kids right away. We wanted, you know, I wanted to make sure like we had fun having, being married. I mean, I'm definitely not perfect with coming to like, I'm hardcore about some stuff and he's like, probably shouldn't have done it that way. And I was like, no, <laughs> if you do it again, you're done. Everything's taken off. He's like, maybe you just want to take it away for an hour. I was like, no, a week. You know, like I'm just sometimes just so uh, hardcore with it. I'm like, okay, yeah, you're right. One hour. Okay. You lost your TikTok for one hour. <laughs> so we're, we're a good balance. For an I hour, to him and a TikTok, losing <laughs> TikTok for an hour, depending on how important TikTok is, that could be like a lifetime. Oh my God. Take yeah. So I'm trying to take it away for a week. So you can imagine what that sounds like. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. But it's so. good, right? So you take, you take what's good and, and, and you mix the two together. And, and what it does is it, it creates this balance because you've got two different perspectives mm -hmm. and two different perspectives is what you really molds children into at, at least having the best chances that they possibly right. can. It's, it's not, there's no ever a guaranteed success, but if you've got these two kind of like complementary views on life and you put them together as a parenting style, you know, it, you can really mold and at least guide them into, you know, a, at least a more steady, more balanced way of being, because being a teenager in 2022, 21, 20, 2019, 2018, like these are some really interesting times to navigate as a teenager and the the best sure. we can do, the best we can do is kind of just be like you know I always talk, I'm like a seeing eye dog like all I do is bark when there's something bad but you know it's really going to be up to you whether you step mm -hmm. off the curb right so uh you know yeah. my son my son's dad that's a good I, one I like that yeah um because you know they're still they're still gonna do whatever it is I'm just I'm a warning that's all I can do is give them a warning because as you know especially with your older one like the the authority you have over them gets thinner and thinner and thinner. And you're like, yeah. you hope that you've spent enough time really building yeah. trust so that if something were to go wrong, they at least know they can tell you that something's wrong because if they don't trust you, then right. they, they won't, you know, they won't tell you, but um, you know, even with a, even with a partner that doesn't look at the world the way you do you know somehow man we I don't know how we did it but somehow we managed to help kind of guide our our teenager in in a pretty good direction you know so I can only imagine with a with a partner right. like yours with solid parents and all of that um so what does your what does your husband do now you said he played football did he play football like professionally or was it just something he grew up playing like high school and stuff? uh yeah he he, he did. So he's also from the Valley. He actually grew up with Andy. He actually knows all, he grew up with all the Lermas, Doug and Andy. So he, they go way back. Um, oh, cool. So they, he played like West Valley Eagles, Pop mm. Warner, and then he went to Crespi and then he went played at Fresno state. 
And then uh, I think in uh, he played six seasons of arena football. Mm-hmm. And the year I met him the la- in 2000, it was uh, the Los Angeles Avengers. So yeah, he was a professional football player. Like, mm-hmm. you know, the professional means paid arenas, uh, the indoor football. Mm-hmm. And so he did that. And then uh, he had a job at AIG, Sun America in the Valley. And then when he got the job with American Express, uh, we took the job down here and moved. And he's been with them 19 years. Yeah, yeah. It's probably better. It's a great job because he's virtual. Yeah, Yeah, virtual. Yeah, yeah. Very little chance of getting a concussion, you know, working there. So, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, he still works out like he's running out of a tunnel tomorrow. So he thinks he's still playing football. (laughs) And listen, just keep moving, right? Just, just you, you still got yeah. that zest and that love for life. Yeah. You know? So, um, yeah. okay. So, going into business for yourself now, where did you get that crazy idea? Instead of just working for someone else, you uh, that just yeah, where did that crazy idea come from? Yeah. So, I mean, you kind of already are working for yourself. You 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 get caught up with a broker. Yeah. In in real estate, you have to work for a broker to be receive a commission. And so when you first start off, you're a salesperson's license, which is just an agent. And so for the first four years I did that, I had a fantastic broker, learned a ton. I would just sit in his office and listen to everything. I learned the loan business at the exact same time of learning the real estate business. So I felt like I had a niche with my, my buyers. I would do their loan at no cost to represent them on a transaction that, you know, the seller pays the commission. Uh, so that worked really well. And then I had a friend call me at a company that was in downtown and they needed a broker and I got a job down there and I ended up going to get my broker's license so that I could be a broker of record in the midst of having babies. So I had a two year old when I got the job and then I got pregnant. So I was, I basically had a, a three and a three and a newborn at the time when I left that job. <clears throat> so I was driving 30 minutes south and running a, running a company down there. I really learned that I, I'm not a manager type. Mm. I, I have a hard time. I love training people as long as they, they put in the effort to be great. I can't, like, for me, it's kind of like hurting cats. You can only teach people so many times how to do it. And if they are not doing it right, that's annoying. <laughs> so yeah. the manager type is like super hard for me because I don't understand if you're in the business, you apply yourself, you do this, you'll be great. If you don't, you're going to suck, <laughs> not okay. suck, but you know, uh, not go anywhere. And then you'll be the complainer. <clears throat> and so after that, I went to another company and you, you become kind of your own business. And so I work for the largest luxury brand, uh, Pacific Sotheby's. Uh, we I've been with them nine years here. I'm their brand influencer. And uh, what that means is that I, I represent the brand at the full, full level of everything that the brand is supposed to, which is, you know, Neiman Marcus, Nordstrom's, all these like high end brands. That's where Sotheby's brand fits into. Uh, so I work as a broker associate underneath them, but I, I am my own, my own team. I just brought on a team member uh, a couple months ago that I'm training right now. She's a newer agent she'll be great. And I have another girl that's going to be joining me. So I'm just starting to really like branch out to create a team, but I I'm so specific about the type of person, what their goals are and you know, how can we all elevate each other's business? But we're all independent contractors. I've, I've been a hundred percent commission the entire time. So all of my income is generated off of my effort. If I don't have effort, I don't have any business. And so I, I like having that hustle because it's uh it's at my control. You know, if I, I could be working really hard for somebody and I get paid the same salary and get treated the same way where I, I am able to control my destiny with how, how my life is. Right. So I thrive in that. A lot of people are like, you're crazy. A hundred percent commission. I need a paycheck every week. I'm like, I'm not sitting on the couch. So like, it doesn't matter. You know, like some people get paid to sit on the couch and work four four hours or whatever. My hours are all over the place. Some days I don't have to work. Some days I work too long. And uh, it works well for me. And so, yeah, if my own business is within that company. Um, we, you know, we have rules with our marketing stuff, but for the most part, no one's calling you. You know, you usually call them if you need something. There's nobody calling or checking like, like a manager would need to. Okay. They're just there for support. Right. And so what happened recently? You, you were featured on something recently, right? I was. What was it? I was... <laughs> I was featured in Vanity Fair. Oh, that's right. Vanity Fair. No, okay. So tell us how that came about. <laughs> what a what a cool, I mean, that's yeah. super cool. 
That's a big deal. You know, yeah. one thing to mention about my childhood is I had a fantastic grandmother, my mom's mm -hmm. mom. Yeah. And uh, every summer I would go to the desert and stay with her all summer from like age three up. And so she was pretty instrumental uh, as far as uh, getting an education. She was a businesswoman. Uh, they ran a, her and my grandfather ran a huge business. Uh, like he had this patent science thing. And so they were doing really, really well. And um, for me, her, she always had Vanity Fair. Uh, so when I, when I got the phone call, I actually thought it was a prank. Mm. The lady called and she said she was with Vanity Fair. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, one of those like moments of like, there's no way Vanity Fair is calling me. That's yeah, like, right. why, would, why would that ever happen? Yeah, that? <laughs> I'm a girl from totally. LA in the yeah. Valley, like you know, the 818, how is this possible, you know? Yeah. And um, I said, okay, no problem. I was in the middle of the I'm like, if you can email me the details, I'll, I'll take a look. And sure enough, an email came through and I'm like, to my husband, I'm like, I, I am so glad I was friendly because I really thought it was a friend pranking me. And uh, it turned out that they were selecting four women in the San Diego region, uh, uh, leaders of business, women leaders of business of San Diego. And uh, it was a really cool experience. It was one of those pinch me, how, 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 how did I make it? And mm. I asked the lady from Vanity Fair, like, you know, how did you find me? And she goes, we, they have a research team and they do a job of finding different people that are more than just like, I'm not the biggest agent with the biggest sales, but I'm yeah. more well-rounded. Like I'm a mom and I'm working and I, I give back to the community of the youth, you know, youth sports. And so they really liked my entire package style of story. And so that's, that's why they called me. And so I was like, you sure it wasn't the hat? <laughs> I'm just kidding. And so they, uh, it was. Well, I'm sure, wait, hold on. I'm sure your fashion uh, <laughs> didn't hurt at least, you know, it's like, okay, she's all these badass things. She's a mom. She's a real estate. She's got crazy. She's making crazy money, but she also looks amazing. So that probably helped at least. Maybe, maybe a little bit for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a big accomplishment. I, I wish my that. grandmother would grandma was alive to see it but I I do think that she had a part of that she had to have she had yeah. to. she's totally really, proud of you I mean yeah well grandmas are grandmas are special creatures anyway right they're right. just I wish you could have more than you know more than two because right. they're, they're so special um but they I are. love that she instilled that in you so like when you were little it, the things you thought of, you know, when it comes to luxury and really kind of making it in life, Vanity Fair just fit in with that. Yeah. Yeah. And so here you are. Uh, was this last, this was just this last year, right? With yeah. It came out, it came out in October of just this uh, last year. Well, first of all, congratulations. That's a Thank big Thank you big so deal. much. I Huge really appreciate deal. that. And, you. uh, you know, and, and for sure, grandma is looking at it going, I yeah. knew it. I just knew it. You know? Yeah. She believed yeah. in you way before you believed in you. For sure. Yeah, she's 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 good people. Yeah, yeah. And so how about the people closest to you? What do the people closest to you think about that accomplishment? Uh, I think most of them were proud. I mean, the thing about... So I'm still really close to my LA friends mm -hmm. uh, that I grew up with. Uh, I And I have my San Diego friends here. And I think it's a lot more exciting for my LA friends mm -hmm. when they see that because they know my entire life story. Mm -hmm. You know, when we pulled into San Diego, we were already doing well. You yeah. know, we, we already, we were, I think I was 28, he was 31. We were already kind of established, I guess, because he already had his other job. I worked at Lexus, so we were doing okay. And so when you pull into the scene and no one knew all of the chapter before, it's kind of like, oh, well, they've already been doing that. And so my LA friends were ecstatic. They were like, this has been your making. This is unbelievable. We're so proud of you. And of course, I have very supportive friends here as well. But I think coming from my LA friends hearing that really meant the most to me because they were the ones that picked me up a lot. You know, I'd call them, I'd sleep on their couch. So I'm still friends with a lot of those girls that were a big a big uh, support system to me. Yeah. Um, and I think at this point, I had a couple other magazine features this year, this last year. So I think everyone's kind of tired of seeing me in a feature. <laughs> you know, San Diego is very relaxed here. They're not really, yeah. it's not really a scene like that. Yeah. I probably do 
it'd probably be more exciting if I was in the LA market doing that if I, than San Diego. Yeah. Well, whether they are noticing it or caring, or not, it doesn't really matter. You're not doing it for them. You know? No, I know. I'm just saying the response, you know, I San Diego is just so chill. That's what I love about people here. I mean, it's flip flops and, mm-hmm. and board shorts and like, you know, you can wear no makeup and they love you. You know, yeah. you go to LA and you got to be dialed to the nines. You got to have your eyelashes on, you know, the stilettos. And so I love my San Diego peeps because it's just, it's more, a little bit more like a home life, you know? And so I don't really talk about that stuff. Like it's not something that's brought up when we're hanging out at a barbecue where in LA, everyone talks about that. You know, you're like, Hey, what did you do last weekend? It's kind of a, a little bit more of a rat race of, you know, who did what at what time. And so exactly, exactly. kind of, kind of living between two markets. Oh, hey, I, you can do it. It's just different hats, right? You know? Yeah, I got plenty of hats. <laughs> yeah, you're plenty of hats, and you're good I at love, switching them. So, yeah, I love I love hats. Yeah. So, talk to me about. Okay, so you've got magazine features. You've got a marriage of twenty years. You've got two teenage kids, and like sports and getting one ready for the Olympics, maybe. I mean, and and not to mention like a real estate business. How do you? And what do you do? But how do you keep Christina just moving? You know, because it can get heavy. It can get overwhelming. I mean, how do you how do you navigate just the schedule alone and stay and, and take care of Christina and keep her cup filled? How do you do that? One day at a time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, I really try to start my morning off. <clears throat> so I stopped drinking. I have six years sober. Mm-hmm. That really, really helped uh, figure out like what my goals were and kind of figure out what was important. For a long time, drinking was just like a band aid of all of my past. And so the first couple of years of being sober was really, really hard. You know, <clears throat> no more being, inv- I was invited to parties. I wasn't, nobody knew what to do with me because I was known as like the party. <laughs> and uh, in that journey of sobriety, like doors keep opening as far as, you know, what do you need to do for yourself? Yeah. And so I, my, my newest journey that I've been pretty good at for the last couple months on a regular basis, you know, you kind of try things, you're like, Oh, I like it for a week. And then you're like, Oh, squirrel. And then yeah. you're, like, yeah. something else. Yeah. you're like, Oh crap, that worked. Let me come back. So my morning starts with, I start off with like a meditation. I love insight timer. They have these like guided courses that you could pick different things like 10 day course of, you know, I, I pick a lot of things about my mindset really working on my mind because your mind, body, spirit's all connected. And then after that, I set one intention for the day. I write it on paper. For a long time, I was putting things on my phone, but now I've learned that like pen to paper is very, very uh, therapeutic and it gets it out because you could just kind of start writing whatever. So I try to, I do one intention a day. If I didn't get the intention in for the day, I'll sit with something I was grateful for before I go to bed. And I'm one of those people like I'll lay into bed. I'm like, I forgot to do my intention. I didn't do my gratitude. Okay. I got to get my, you know, get my pen and paper. Um, and then followed with, uh, I've been trying to do like at least 20 minutes of some type of activity, like cardio just for, uh, heart health and not even for like losing weight or anything like that, just some kind of movement so that my mind and central nervous system is calm. And then I stretch. And so I think all of those really play a significant role into my mood of like, how do I manage such a crazy chaotic schedule? Um, And I'm really good at multitasking. I mean, I am the ultimate calendar. I can, I can think of five different things at one time going on and be able to manage everything. And, uh, I think at the same time, if that's a great gift to have, it's also, you know, you could get burned out. And so, I do find myself at like the weekends, I'm very tired and sometimes I'm exhausted. I'm like, why did I take on that much? I should, I knew I shouldn't have like, like my, with work, I've gotten a lot better at scheduling my time. Like my first appointments are usually 10 yeah. so that I'm, I have my morning for myself. I usually don't turn on my phone until nine. Like I don't respond to texts or emails or anything so that I still have that like sacred morning time. And that's been tremendous. But there's times I'll do like a 10, 11, a 12, a one. And then by two o'clock, I'm like, I can, I'm a disservice to anybody at two because I haven't had anything to eat, you know? And so I think it's just an, I take it day by day. I mean, some days are fantastically flow great and some days are a complete disaster for me. Um, but, you know, it, I think you just constantly keep learning from it, but it's, it's definitely 
it might appear that it's all together from the outside, uh, but it is a daily, you know, it's a, a daily, where's this going to go? And where's this going to go? And how are we fitting this in? And uh, my biggest thing is I don't like to miss my kids' games. So, and with the kids have games at the same time, I have a really hard time with that because I, I want to be at both. And so that's where like the, the calendar conflict will become, you'll see my chaoticness of like, how do they schedule this? I don't understand. Like, why can't I be at both? And my husband will say, okay, we'll split up and divide. I'm like, okay. And then switch at halftime. Like, what are we doing here? I'm like, I got to, I need my kids to see that I'm at both. And so we're getting to the age where the calendar is becoming very hard because they have their own schedule now where before everyone's schedule is kind of under like how our work schedule was. So it, it's, we'll see it. It's day to day. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and how do you like at home, how do you maintain a uh, connection with the people you love? Like, do you guys have, um, do you have something that you do every day together? Like you always have coffee together. You always like, how do you maintain the connection with the people you love the most? Sure. Well, we have dinner every night. Yeah. Uh, we sit at a dining table. Um, weekends, we play games, like, you know, board games and stuff like that. We, us as a family, we're cracking jokes or busting each other's chops about something, talking smack, or my daughter will do like a TikTok dance and my husband will get into the TikTok dance. And then we're like begging the 15 year old boy and he doesn't want to be seen. And so it's, yeah. I think 90% of the time, it's just naturally, we all have a good time. Um, coffee in the morning, the dinner at night, my husband works from home. So like sometimes we'll have lunch or we always have the ability to be talking to each other if I'm home and he's home, yeah. which is more often he's home more than I am because I'm out in the field. But you know, we text each other and check in all day long. It's not like if I left the house at let's say 10 and I'm gone till three, it's not like I haven't text him or talked to him in between my call, like driving. And so I just think we're, we're really connected uh, all day long. There's not really a, uh, we're not going hours at a time unless we're both like on a call, like long conference calls or Zooms and things like that. That's the only time that would be a little bit difficult. Um, but every day it's just kind of a system. I, I have music on in the house all the time. There's always like Post Malone or Drake or something always in the background so that the vibe of the house is always chill. There's always candles lit in different rooms. So it always smells good. So that's just kind of, I wake up, I do all that kind of set the intention for the day with the house and it, for the most part it works until the kids you know they fight uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know it's fun when they uh hate each other but you set the tone right so it's like yeah it's we're we're going into this monday mellow we're gonna listen to some music we're gonna light some candles everybody just at least set the intention to you know get along and make the most of your day and then i don't know outside energies or whatever you know can you know whatever get in the way of that but it's good to set your day you know that way and i love that you and your husband um connect with each other all like all day even 22 years later right you guys been together yeah years like you know, Andy and I are very much the same way. Like he works from home and I work from home. So we end up having lunch together. Uh, we even text each other when we're home because he's downstairs, I'm upstairs. And yeah, you know, totally. Um, and, and when he was working, you know, because he's at Netflix, you know, um, like even when he was working away, you know, we still talk to each other on lunch breaks. You know, we've been together eight years now and it's like we still kind of can't wait to talk to each other. Right. And we spend all day together. So it's like, keeping that kind of like I can't wait to see you or I you know I look forward to hearing from you vibe between two people that dynamic of like I still want to talk to you I still want to see you I can't right. wait to like have lunch you know that's special it is special it, it is. is it is it takes and it takes effort too it does and it does it takes equal effort on both you know both both sure. sides of that so um you know it's two people knowing that you know solid relationships are not just like they're not it's not a given right it's something that you have to work at and it's something you have to put effort into so you know he and I and you know before you met your husband you like you said you were dating people that just weren't good for you but um you know you you, you date people all over the place and you learn yeah. a lot and, and when you find somebody solid you know making sure that you continue to make them feel special five years 10 years 20 years down the road um see we have five minutes left and uh, no way fast fast? Fast? <laughs> yes 
told you. I can talk to you for hours. <laughs> I, I told you. It goes by fast when you're in, like, you're just flowing and having a conversation. Um, awesome. But what I would say is that the, uh, making, it, making someone feel special, making someone feel important to you, whether it's your kids or your spouse, or even like the, the girlfriends in your life, people that you want to know, people that are special to you, like really telling them and don't make them guess because people can't guess. They're, people are yeah. terrible mind readers. And you have to like spell it out like, hey, I love you. You're important to me. You know, yeah. making sure that the people you love know that. Just, I mean, that's that to me. I know that that's a major reason why my husband and I are still so close. And, you know, we just, like I said, celebrated eight years together and it feels Congrats. Like it's awesome. been like eight months. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. And, I mean, he's a great guy. Like, and yeah. you already know this, you know? Yeah. He's, he, he's a cool guy. Yes. He he's pretty solid. He's, he was always one of the cool guys. That's what's so funny is there's always like a cool, a couple of them in the Valley that were just, just good, easy guys, you know, yeah. like we worked out at the same gym, but like when you're in the Valley, everyone kind of knows everyone growing up and stuff. And so yeah. he was just always such an easy, cool guy. Like yeah. it was like, there was never any drama. It was never difficult. Like he was just so, but you were just like him. So it's like, you guys are like perfect. I like love seeing all your pictures and like how happy he is. And you guys yeah. like glow together. And I agree, you know, you know, for me, like when I make my kids lunch, <clears throat> because I am still that mom. I wake up, I make them breakfast, I pack their lunch. And then I put like little sticky notes, like have a great day or I love you. And then my, you know, my husband will leave uh, a sticky note in like my coffee thing or things like that. And so I think we're just all very big hearted. My friends would probably tell you that I'm the most thoughtful person when it comes to any of their birthdays or any of the things for them. I'm always one of those people that I know what it feels like to be left out. I know what it feels like not to receive the love and yeah. so I never want to be the one that doesn't like give it out. And so I'm definitely more of a giver than a yeah. taker. It's almost like my birthday just passed and every, you know, a couple of people are like, what are you going to do for your birthday? And I didn't, I didn't really think about that, but if it's everybody else's birthday, I'm planning out the whole entire thing. I want to make it, you know, I love birthday celebrations. And so, but I rather have a birthday celebration for someone else than worry about myself. And so I agree. I think a lot of that, all those little things, <laughs> I taught my son that. So now he tells me that every day he goes, it's the little things, mom. I go, it is the little things. Like, you know, it is, it's the little things. And he, so now that he, every day he does like one little thing. He's like, it's the little things, mom. Cause he's, you know, he's trying to get his friend to go snowboarding with us. So he's like, it's the little things, mom. I'm like, right. oh, so yeah. annoying when you're a teenager throwing it back in the face. <laughs> well, you know, you've taught them well, so you're who they're going to practice these things on, you know? So you, yeah. you get to, you get to do that with them and they get to, you know, practice these life skills with you and these little yeah. life hacks, like the, it is the little things, you know, For life sure. is really short and we don't know, you know, tomorrow is not promised. And we, Agreed. you know, if we get lucky enough to find some really solid human beings to experience this with, you know, it is the little things and it is one day at a time taking a marriage or any other major relationship one day at a time and really nurturing it for a 24 hour cycle because yesterday doesn't exist and tomorrow's not here. So like taking today yep. and building and just building and building. Stacking. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So I love that you've done that with your life. You took a, a, a bunch of lemons, right? Yeah. Uh, an entire lemonade stand of <laughs> and really just turned it into a beautiful experience for you that puts you in this awesome position to help others. And, and I'm, I'm, I really have loved chatting with you for this last hour. I can't believe it's already up, I you know? know, but thank you so much for taking the time out and just, you know, sharing from the heart and being really authentic and, you know, sharing with the people that listen and view this, you know, show. I just, I love having people from all kinds of different walks of life. And just, especially someone with a story like yours that, you know, that underdog story, it's real. It's absolutely real. And thank you so much for coming on and sharing it with me. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And tell Andy, thank you so much for thinking of me and that I got the opportunity. I will. I will. You're amazing. Yeah. I'm so excited. And I really appreciate all of your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And good luck. And if you're in any more magazines, you know, make sure you share with us. <laughs> okay, yeah. you got it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, no, he said to say hi to you. He texted me before the show. He's like, oh, good luck, you know, because he, oh, awesome. he thinks you're great. So um, awesome. We'll have to meet in person. Uh, yes, let's do it. We'll have coffee. I would love that. <laughs> okay.
Awesome. All right, okay. guys. Thank you for joining for one more week of, you know, my best life with Susanna Sprague. I'm Susanna Sprague, your faithful host that brings you incredible people like Christina Thomas here. And Christina Thomas, thank you so much for joining us. And, um, you know, we'll see everybody next week. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. It's a scavenger for free radical, bacteria, and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASET. NASET increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.salvationnutra.com.